So this is just a little practice of uh, building up functions. You know, if you think that the last video was enough practice, you're welcome to skip this one. Uh, nothing new will be gained from this. We're just going to go over some of the new functions. So I'm going to write a function that will take two arguments, uh, two numerical arguments, essentially. We'll call it... I don't know, quart maybe? No, we'll call it list half quart. And what this is going to do, after it takes your two arguments, we'll say num1, not num2, num1 and num2. We'll say that it will return the list with the original two numbers. Uh, both of both of the numbers divided by two, so number one divided by two and number two divided by two, and then both of the num numbers divided by four, or a quarter of both the numbers. So number one divided by four and number two divided by four will also go in that list. So that list will contain number one, number two, number one divided by two, number two divided by two, number one divided by four, and number two divided by four. All right, and um, this is basically just to kind of get you used to the idea of making this. So let's say uh, num1h is equal to, actually, we should probably make our list num list. So we'll just make it completely blank num list dot append num1 num list dot append num2 okay and we'll actually put the float of these numbers we'll actually put the float of these numbers because I want them to be I want them to be as what okay basically yeah We'll do numlist dot append the float of num1 divided by 2. So copy and paste that. And divided by 2. I've lost an equal sign here. Sorry about that. And then we'll have numlist.append float number 2 divided by 2 it might actually be faster for me to type out I'm pretty fast typer actually float num1 divided by 4 numlist.append float num2 divided by 4 and then we should return numlist and this should give us a bunch of lists of numbers so let's say that nuevo list is equal to list underscore half underscore what um let's say three and eight so that's to be let's let's just see what how that comes out yeah and let's check the values of nuevo list so there we are 3.0 half of that is 1.5 a quarter of 3.0 is 0.75 Half of 8 is obviously 4, but 4.0 because it's a float now, and a quarter of 8 is 2. So you can see that our function will uh, give us, will return us a nice little list. Yeah. Now let's say I need many lists like this. All I have to do is tape out list equals list half quote and the two numbers, and it saves me plenty of time from having to tape all of this up so this is basically a mathematical function and a uh, 
list output rolled into one all there for me quite quite easily done i've now got my nice little package there and i can use this function from uh, here whenever the heck i want to implement it rather than having to write all of this out and then having a list there and then doing the second list that way and copy and paste in it i can just use this function here it saves me a heck of a lot of time and a lot of miscalculation and possibly human error okay now we're going to do a, another uh, function. This one is going to be maybe like, like a corporate letter. So we'll call it corporate sale response. Yeah. And they'll take your name and purchase quant, which is just shop for purchase quantity. And we'll make this a print statement. So you can't actually get anything out of it. Dear. Oops. That's just going to print out plus there if I do that. Dear name. Actually, we should probably have the corporate name. So we'll put corp name there. And you'll see that this is essentially just a letter from um, from a corporation. So let's imagine that you buy a product or purchase value. So we at Are uh, very happy for your purchase. Very happy for your purchase. There needs to be a plus there. We are glad you have decided to spend to make a purchase to the value of and then we add the purchase value but we'll add the purchase value as an str of itself because this will probably be a uh, an int or a flat please do not hesitate date to purchase from us again all right so let's see how this goes might not work but you know as i say this is just practice just to kind of get used to uh writing stuff you know and if it doesn't work i'll look like an idiot in my own video right but i will have learned something hopefully i'll have learned why it didn't work Maybe no, I've just learned I'm an idiot, but at least I've tried and at least I'll know with this run So I'll never never be afraid to write something that say it runs. So my name is mr Quinlan oh, Not Quinal Quinlan, let's I've bought a hundred and twenty dollars pounds euros pesos whatever where for whatever product from um, Happy ink okay dear mr quinlan we at happy ink are very happy for your purchase we are glad you have decided well it should have been decided but that's fine to make a purchase to the value of 120 doesn't say what doesn't matter please do not hesitate to purchase from us again i'll just change that to decided because i know it doesn't matter and it still demonstrated that this works but it'd be, it'd be, just be nice if it was spelt right, if it was grammatically correct, you know. So, dear Mr. Crinlan, we are happy, we at Corp Name, which is Happy Inc., are very happy for your purchase. We are glad you have decided to make a purchase of, to the value of the string of purchase value, which is 120 in this case. 
please do not hesitate to purchase from us again. Can you see how maybe in an automated response uh, that might be, let's say, several uh, more lines in this, or it may be a hundred print statements, uh, you know, when you see those very big automated responses and it has your name on it. And it also, maybe it might be a job response, you know, you're asking about a job and it says, unfortunately, or fortunately, you have been considered for this role, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is most likely how they... Uh, they make these automated responses and if it isn't it is a way that you or someone else or well anyone really could implement a system like that yeah notice that this has no return statement so i know that we've been over this but this just means that basically these strings here they're just printed out but we can't use them you know there's no output of these strings whereas here that is an output the list half the list is an output here whereas here there's there's not actually you know a usable output it's just a print statement to the screen also remember that after the return statement anything that's inside of uh, this define the, the defining of a function will not uh, will, will, will not be read will not be used by the program the return statement just ends the function okay now let's do one more we'll do a big Big, big, crazy uh, mathematical function. Maths 1, we'll call it. And we'll have number 1, number 2, number 3. Okay. And number 4 is equal to number 1 plus number 2 plus number 3. Number 5 is equal to number four divided by number uh, number three. We'll say number six is equal to number two times by num two. Okay, and number seven is equal to number six plus number five plus number four return num seven quite quite a complicated uh, statement no let's see what it does I'll have no idea if it works because it's a pretty you know not so basic maths function so we'll say three five and seven Ooh, this could be fatal this could be fatal what does it even return? Name math. Oh, of course it's not defined. Math 1. Not just math. It returns 42.1428. Now, I have no idea if that is true, if this summing of those three numbers returns that. But basically, let's say that I did know and understand this math by heart. But what this shows is that I can do a fairly complex calculation and instead of having to write the calculation over and over again or do it manually, I can simply just write math 1. And let's say I want to do it for these numbers now. 6, uh, 92 and 12. Yeah. Suddenly I have the answer there. Easy, easy. It didn't require me to copy and paste all of this which is semi-practical in this case. You know, it's, it's possible to do that. However, let's imagine that I did copy and paste this, okay? I would then have to, let's, you have to imagine that I had all, you know, these different numbers, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'd have to set number one, number two, and number three as variables. So first off, I'd have to have number one is equal to six. I'd have to type that out manually. Number two is equal to 92 and number three is equal to 12. Then if I wanted to change them, I'd have to change all three of these numbers and copy and paste this. It would just take a little bit longer to do that. Yeah. And that's really why it's worth, you know, if you're making some kind of complicated mathematical function or a, a really complex 
mathematical calculation to put it in a function like this. Let's imagine that this is now a 50 line function, or let's say it's a 100 line function. It would actually not be so easy for me to even copy and paste this. And the fact that it's only got three variables doesn't make this process easier because let's imagine it's a hundred it's a hundred lines long right i have to scroll down and up to copy and paste the whole thing i have to then look at it to make sure i haven't copied and pasted something i wasn't supposed to then i have to go back to the original three variables number one number two and number three and change them just to do this all over again if i want to save it in a function so that is why these maths functions are so darn useful. Anyway, that's the end of that. Just a little practice, and that should be the end of our practice with functions.